Kid, seriously. Finally, the mark has come back to Kids Seriously. Welcome, Jabronius, to another hip hoppity Easter version of the Kids Seriously show, the only podcast around. That's it. We are the only podcast around. Every now and again, we get together to discuss the world. We play our world-famous trivia question game show, discuss other things from Nerdland that might tickle our fancy, and once in a while, review a trailer. To my left, it's everyone's favorite Briar Boy. It's Luke Neitzel. And to my right, way to my right, it's the White Rabbit himself. It's Mark Neitzel. Gentlemen, how are you? Did did you call me a Briar Boy? Like... (laughs) I, I don't even understand what's happening at the moment. It, it, White Rabbit, is that a Game of Thrones reference? Um, my, some guy who gets offed in season four? Probably, no. but I don't think that's what that was. It's just a, just an Alice in Wonderland. Oh. I, I started thinking about the... Uh, I, oh, you said Briar. I was thinking of the, the Br'er Rabbit, which is a very racist ride at Disney World. So I'm glad we're, we're avoiding that minefield. I'm having a fantastic weekend. My soccer team actually didn't look like total garbage for once, which was pretty exciting. Uh, it's like 77. No, it was in the 80s today in Milwaukee. So I'm excited about that. I got my I Drink and I Know Things Game of Thrones cup because that just ended and I finished watching that episode. So no, every everything's coming up Luke right now. My team also didn't play like garbage. Um, got our second win of the season. It's about... 68 degrees here. Uh, I'm rested. I'm drinking a nice uh, light lager that is mixed with uh, coffee. And uh, I'm ready to go. Ready to get back in the saddle and get on this again. Well, welcome back, of course, Mark. We missed you so terribly. So uh, with only each other to keep ourselves warm in the long, long winter. But it's good that you're back now. And we are excited once again for me. Guys, I spent a lot of time this weekend watching uh, wrestling. There's no other way around it. I started off the weekend watching a documentary uh, called Made in Heaven, and that was about Randy Macho Man Savage and Miss Elizabeth. That led to – it was the show was like Dark Side of the Mad, Dark Side of Wrestling, something like that. And they had another episode on the Montreal Screwjob that completely changed my opinion on how that all went. And from there, it was lots of YouTube videos and that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, I've been uh, I've been getting back into uh, the old WWE. We're going to get right to Marty Jannetty's favorite game show. It's Am I Right or Am I Wrong? In true American style, our contestants are going to offer up their earnest opinions, which will either be taken as fact or... Or immediately mocked by our mar- moderator. Here's how the two-player version of our game works. There are seven questions. The winner is the one who gets more, or maybe four tonight. Mark asks, Luke and I are competing boys. Are you ready? Woo! Yes, of course. So then, Mark, you have to do something because you wrote the questions. Oh, oh, okay. I, I, I thought he was going to tee it up. You know, I mean... Uh, Maya, are you ready since you're going to be answering here? Oh, I'm, I'm so ready. Okay, thank you. All right, so we know that this this game is based around pop culture questions, but first and foremost, before we get into that, I'm, I'm going to break form just a little bit um, since this is my first time back after a couple months off. And so question number one really is, what did you miss most about my me in my absence? What what was the biggest hole that my absence left in your lives? Who who goes first? I don't even remember <laughs> how that works. Have... Uh, why don't we why don't we go with you first? Okay, so I'll I'll go first and I'll say that what I like is just having kind of uh, mindless background support for whatever opinion I put forward. You know, like, it, you don't have to give a lot of backing detail or whatever. It's just, you're kind of like that kid who stands behind the other kid in the fight and goes, yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, to just have that behind me the whole time, really, it boosts my confidence. It makes me feel good about myself. Um, you know, it, it's an important role that is needed in uh, in this team. So that's that's what I missed. I'm happy to, uh, to have that back. Interesting. Maya. 
What what well, did you pledge, know? Father? Well, Luke might be my my best. Friend. I've known longer. I've loved longer, and I'm glad that you're back. You bring a reason to this program uh, that when you're gone, it just it just isn't the same. So. Um, it's it's sort of the voice of the elder. Now you're only a couple years older, but it's just that that sort of voice of reason that sometimes Luke and I need. I mean, if you had been gone any longer, we probably would have started up our earlier show. Maya and Luke saw a movie trailer. No, um, it, it would have been it would have been Maya and Luke fight about Aquaman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, back. Okay. Well, Maya, while I appreciate that very heartfelt and, and honestly, um, you know, touching answer, I'm going to have to go with Luke for the point simply because he correctly identified my fighting style in college, which was hide behind our mutual friend football and talk shit. So um, that is going to be point to Luke. He is up one nothing, And now we are on to question number two. So in, in my uh, current time off, I've, I've had a lot of time to myself, you know, to do research on things like how to cancel WWE network. Um, surprisingly didn't do a lot of research in, in support of this podcast, but that, that's neither here nor there. Um, I have been listening to a lot of music too, because we're going to be buying a record player and I'm going to be um, converting some of my catalog uh, to vinyl. And one of the things that, I, I thought about and it was just kind of an interesting topic uh, for us to discuss is when it comes to song lyrics, what are the most misunderstood song lyrics that you can think of? Um, and we'll cover just about anything in sort of the, the, the pop music category here, uh, pop, rock, rap, um, we can go country. I don't know a lot of countries, so I'm telling you right now, you're probably not going to be right if you go that route. But what are the most misunderstood song lyrics? Maya, this goes to you. So I think I'm probably going to lose the point, but I'm just going to say this because it's honestly, because I understand about 20% of the lyrics of this band's total uh, catalog. It's Pearl Jam. Like, I have misunderstood so many of those mumbling lyrics my entire life. Um, some of the ones that I've come up with have been pretty good, almost as good, well, maybe halfway as good as Eddie Vedder's himself. So I will go with Pearl Jam just as a personal note. Is that Are we picking a band or are we picking a song? Well, we were picking a song, but... Hey, um, you guys are experts. You can pick literally any song from Pearl Jam and I would have misheard it. Well, I, so I'm not, I'm not going to pick Pearl Jam, but there's, there's one that comes up, especially every time there's an Olympics that pisses me off. More, more than anything, because it gets used to celebrate every time we win a fucking medal. Because nobody actually listens to the verses; they just listen to the chorus. And that is uh, Bruce Springsteen, "Born in the USA," which is a movie that, or a song that is about how we mistreat veterans of Vietnam. Uh, he is not saying "Born in the USA" as a positive, but yet people just listen to the chorus and be like, yeah, rock on, like, USA is awesome. Um, and that misses the entire point of what that song is about. Um, and uh, it infuriates me to no end because we will we will hear it until we die every time we win a gold medal. So, um, Maya, you insulted Pearl Jam, so you automatically lost the point. Um, Luke, that's a very good selection. You're going to get the point. It's not what I had, um, but... Uh, another fun little fact, too, is that Ronald Reagan actually used to play Born in the USA at his political rallies until Springsteen told him to stop. Yeah. That's that's how misunderstood that song is. Um, my answer was actually Regulate by Warren G. and Nate Dogg. And, and, and the reason why is, if you ever actually listen to those lyrics, Warren G. is a little punk bitch the entire time he gets jacked. He has to have Nate Dogg save his ass. Nate Dogg brings all the girls to hang out at the East Side Motel. I, he contributes nothing to this dynamic, yet nobody ever seems to talk bad about him. So that always really pisses me off. Uh, but neither of you got that. Luke, you were closer. Born in the USA gets the point. Luke is up two to nothing. Okay. Or... You're going to have to start digging deep here, Maya. Um, you, you got well, a bit of a I'll try. Out. Okay. Question number three. We're going to stay with uh, music here. And 
I, I, there isn't really a right answer to this. I, I just want to see who's going to open themselves up the most. What is the song you're most embarrassed to admit is in your iTunes, CD, record, whatever collection you have? What song do you like and do you own that you are most embarrassed to admit that you have? Luke, go. Well, so, so this question's a little harder for me because I don't actually have iTunes or any of that stuff. So I don't actually have a catalog of music. I just have the leftover Pearl Jam and Dropkick Murphy CDs I had from... 20 years ago. So I'm trying to think of songs that I like that are just garbage. Um, and I don't feel like I'm going to have a particularly creative answer, but, um, and part of this actually is, is do, okay. I know which one I'm going to say. And part of it has to do with just hanging out with, uh, Maya at a, uh, in his hometown at a metal bar that was having a, um, a gun raffle while we were there. It was all these biker dudes and Maya and his brother and I spent all our money so that we could max out the jukebox playing Fernando by ABBA over and over and over in between the Metallica songs. So now I absolutely love it whenever I hear Fernando anywhere. Okay. That's an interesting choice. Maya. Ball's in your court. Remember, you're down to nothing, so you need to bring some big guns here. We know it's 311. Just say it. <laughs> no, I don't own 311 and wouldn't. But um, for me, the most embarrassing, probably because it's the band's most embarrassing song, too, it's uh, R.E.M.'s Shiny Happy People. R.E.M. Out of Time was my favorite album for years and years. I probably have not listened to any other album as much as that album. I got it when I was, I think, uh, sixth grade. And um, I like that song, but it's embarrassing because it's just awful. I mean, it's it's almost like sometimes when Michael Stipe just, he was like trying to do things tongue-in-cheek or like trying to seem hip, and sometimes it doesn't always just land properly. And uh, there are two moments on that album, uh, Shiny Happy People, and then the first song um, where they have K- KRS-One rapping. It's just kind of embarrassing. So, um yeah, Shiny Happy People by R.E.M., one of my favorite bands, but not their best moment. Okay. Well, I, I don't know that I necessarily agree with you in that I think Shiny Happy People is kind of supposed to be bad, but you do own it, and Luke apparently doesn't own Fernando. So you're going to get the point kind of by default here. Um, I'm going to be completely honest. I'm, I'm a little disappointed in, in both of you. I was kind of hoping to get something a little worse than that. But uh, you know what? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Luke. You I, I just want to, going back to our last question, I, I just want to uh, point out here that I just received an email from Mrs. Madrid who who sent me an NPR article confirming that Born in the USA is the most understood song in, a, in American culture. So I just wanted to pat myself on the back for that, I, I gave you the by the point. way. I know. I just want to reiterate. Um, I actually also, after he said Shiny Happy People, uh, want, want Maya to get the point because that song is horrible. <laughs> Oh, it is. Even, bad. even they think it's horrible. Like if yeah. it was meant as a joke, they don't think it's funny anymore. Like well, I got that from a documentary that they did, and they were like, somebody brought it up, and they were just like, "Oh, don't mention it." And and you're gonna go to the effort of getting a B fifty two, and it's not Fred Schneider. I just don't understand why. And you're gonna make a video of it. Okay, so Maya comes back with one point. We are now at two to one, Luke over Maya, and so. I, I've had a, a recent absence here, and one of the reasons why I was absent was because I needed some time to, to really focus on adjusting to my new home of, of Portland. And long time, this got me thinking about Portland and about you know where I come from. And, and long time fans of the show know that I'm originally from Minnesota. Uh, Luke is from Minnesota as well. Maya has spent a good deal of time in Minnesota. And, and one of the things that happens when you live in Minnesota or you're from there is you spend a lot of time thinking about how much better Minnesota is than Wisconsin. Um, It really is just amazing how in every single category, Minnesota is a superior state with superior people to the state of Wisconsin. It's almost embarrassing at that. However, there is exactly one way just one way in which Wisconsin is superior, not only to Minnesota, but dare I say it, to the rest of the United States. 
Wisconsin has one thing that it can hold above everybody else. The question is, what is that one thing? And before I let Maya answer, I'm going to save him from losing the point and tell him it's not the Packers because there are plenty of teams that have more titles and are better than the Green Bay Packers. So having said that, what is the one way in which Wisconsin is superior to the rest of the United States? Maya, take it away. Well, first of all, I just want to say that uh, one of the ways that Wisconsin is, is superior is that it doesn't have the smug people that Minnesota has. It also doesn't have the inferiority complex that Minnesota has. You'll notice that a couple times, I don't know if we were recording or if it was before the recording when you were talking about the Vikings and just this insatiable need you have to sort of live up to Packer fandom. Uh, you guys beat, the Gophers beat the Badgers one time in like a billion years, and you guys are like crying and weeping. It's, it's embarrassing. It is embarrassing how great of a state Minnesota is, but it's filled with so many smug, obnoxious people that you can't even enjoy it because you're so busy comparing yourselves to us. What is the way that Wisconsin is more superior than everybody else? Shit, we have more lakes than anybody else. Deal with it. But less coastline, and you don't have seven national championships for your precious Badgers. But anyway, that that not being the point, the point is that there was a classic television show that happened in the 80s. It defined a generation. It defined us all. It was about a British nanny trying to fit in with a family, and it featured the one and only Mr. Baseball, just a bit outside. Bob Euchre is the reason that Wisconsin is better than every other state. He is a national treasure. He will be remembered forever for being the dad on Mr. Belvedere, as well as Major League, all his Tonight Show appearances. He is the best announcer in baseball history. It is Bob Euchre. And Luke has the point. Question number five. One of the things I've, I've had time to do um, in my uh, downtime now is catch up on some of my, my movie going. And one of the movies that's been on my list for a while to see and I finally got around to was the movie Mandy starring Nicolas Cage in his probably the most insane hour and a half of cinema I've ever seen. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I, I recommend it highly. It's fantastic. It'll blow your mind in all the right ways. But, sadly, it does not feature Nicolas Cage's greatest performance ever. So the question is, what movie features Nicolas Cage's greatest performance of all time? Luke? question goes to you. Well, I feel like you're you're being ironic. So if you were being ironic, I'm not going to choose this as my answer. If you're being ironic, it's it's face off because it's so ridiculous um and over the top. But um I I think his actual my favorite performance of Nicolas Cage, the best combo of kind of his wacky and his craziness put in a movie that still works for me is Raising Arizona, the the early Coen Brothers movie. Um, I, I think he was a perfect fit for that movie. I'm kind of sad that he didn't do more Coen Brothers stuff because I feel like they could have really harnessed the things he does well and made it made it into something more interesting than a lot of the, the choices he made later. So I'll go Raising Arizona. Maya? That was my answer, so I'll go with Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Which he's also very good in. Yeah, that's the those are the only two movies I can handle them in. So, okay, I'm gonna get another one. I play uh, this with my heart, not with uh, not try to get wins. So, okay. that's just the truth. Well, um, you're both wrong, and neither of you get the point because when you are dealing with Nicolas Cage, you can only go with ironic performances. And the correct answer was the southern accent in Con Air which just kind of cuts in and out at random points of time and, and is, is really amazing to watch him try and underplay in a movie that is so off the wall. All right. So we're, we're through five questions. It's Luke three, Maya one. So Maya, you're going to have to run the table just to, to pull the tie here. Uh, question number six. It was recently announced 
that the MLS, uh, everybody on this podcast's favorite soccer league, is going to be expanding to 30 teams. Now, it's pretty clear already that in addition to Nashville, Miami, uh, the team number 20, oh, also Austin, too, which would be team number 27, uh, number 28 and number 29 are almost guaranteed to be Sacramento and St. Louis. So that really only leaves the number 30 spot open and competitive. So the question is, what city is going to secure that elusive MLS number 30 spot? Maya, this goes to you. So you know how, like... Whenever there's a movie franchise and it just goes on too long with the same topics over and over and over, like, you know, like, Speed got it by, like, the second movie, right? Like, now this time, uh, I can't even remember Speed 2. Cruise Control. Speed 2? Uh, um, my point is that eventually everything jumps the shark, and I'm afraid that our show jumped the shark, because not, what, three weeks ago we had the same damn question, except it was just a little different. It was, like, which city, and it was St. Louis. Um, I don't know. Fucking Fargo, North Dakota. Well, someone's still mad about the Minnesota question. Anyway, uh, so I, I would I would guess probably Detroit. Detroit was one of the ones that they almost had to deal with not too long ago with the Ford family, but then they didn't want to play at the Lions Stadium. But it looks like they got some more momentum there. They have a good fan base uh, for soccer with what the MPSL Pro team, Detroit City, does. Um, I, I would guess it was them, but, you know, you can never throw away the wild card of trying to shoehorn something else into Texas because, you know, all the other teams in Texas are doing so well, so why not throw San Antonio a bone or, or something? But I'll say Detroit. Okay. Um, well, neither of you got – Luke, you're going to get the point because you actually tried to answer the question, unlike, uh, you know, Mr. I answered the Peter question Parker. three weeks ago. Listen to the show. I don't listen to this show. I don't listen to this show when I'm on it. You think I'm going to listen when I'm not involved? No, no. Well, no. Our listeners are very disappointed in you. <laughs> so Luke gets the point. The correct answer was not Detroit. The correct answer was actually no city in Wisconsin. So, um, Well, and boo to that, because I would love to have one in Milwaukee. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. There is uh, no city in Wisconsin that is capable of supporting uh professional sports so yeah no one sells out like uh, san francisco does down there huh yeah <laughs> the, the barn burner big cities that pack them in like new york and houston <laughs> population is the sole determiner for sure don't need to get any more bitter i don't need i don't need two of you wisconsin people up on my my girl here so now luke you've won the game because my only has one point and we've only got one one left to go here but we'll play it out just because you know that's how we do here and the final question this is going to be structured just a little bit different okay it's going to be a toss-up ball and so after i say the question the first person to say their name shout their name out will get first crack at taking a guess so does that make sense uh we're, we're schmo downing it apparently maya yeah I don't know what that means, but as long as you two both uh, understand, then, then we're good to go. We got it. Okay. Question number seven. So Game of Thrones, the final season, has recently started airing on HBO. And while I watched the first season, and I enjoyed it, um, I fell behind and then I never got back into it. And so as a result, this is something that I just am completely out of the zeitgeist on. Right? You know, everybody is just all talking about it, and I just it have no clue i'm completely on the outside so there is one other franchise uh in a similar realm you know we're gonna go the sci-fi fantasy world and now, nicole smith um i'm was that you shouting in was that your answer or your name <laughs> no no that wasn't my answer my answer is lost but i, I just wanted to say anna oh. nicole smith anna nicole smith yeah, so I, I just to ring in. That's why I just you know it just came to me. But, uh, okay, lost okay, is the answer. Okay. Maya has said lost. That is not the correct answer, Luke, for the steal. 
Well, yeah, I knew you watched Lost. Um, I, I, I don't know if you're talking about something recent off the top of my head, something that would be sci-fi fantasy, but when you said the sci-fi thing, the only thing I think about is Star Trek, I guess. I don't think you were a Star Trek person, but... Okay. Uh, that is also incorrect in that um, I, I'm not a huge Star Trek fan, but I have seen a, a goodly amount of it. Um, had we actually gotten all the way through the question, it would have said that this is something that I have not had any exposure to at all in in whatever form it has taken. Um, so... It, now that that caveat is out there, do either of you have a guess? A uh, popular Black Mirror. No, I did see the pig fuck episode and it <laughs> disturbed me greatly. <laughs> uh, After that one, but I did see that. Is it, um, it's sci-fi that Doctor Who is my guess. But, um... Oh, no, because you used to see that at Nick Siccarelli's at like two in the morning. I did. Great to meet the fuck out no um, i said sci-fi fantasy i don't think you're gonna get it and the game's already decided so we'll just uh, blow the final whistle it is actually harry potter i have never oh. read a harry potter book i have never seen a harry potter movie i know absolutely nothing about it beyond the fact that little kids dress up like it and that they apparently play the sport on UC Berkeley campus where you get a bunch of people running around with brooms in between their legs. And I actually so, saw that once in Pittsburgh. We went to a yeah. park and there were people doing that in Pittsburgh or whatever, and they looked like they were having a blast. So good, good yeah. on them. I've, I've seen a couple of movies, but I think that's a pretty big deal over at the Madrid house, right? Mrs. Madrid, I think's read, read all the books and you guys have seen all the movies, right? Yeah. She actually just passed me a note that said that Mark has no soul, which, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm going to agree with, but, you know, I I've I haven't read the books. My son has them all, and my our mom, you know, Mark and my mom gives him one every Christmas. And he, so far, he hasn't shown any interest in reading them. But we're hoping when he gets older that he does. But we've seen I don't know four or five of the movies. I've never had a bad time watching the movies, but it was just like something else came up that I wanted to rent, so we just never ended up getting through them all. Yeah, no, it's it's absolutely no statement on the quality of the product. I, I'm not uh, opposed to it or. or you know, boycotting it. I just have never gotten to it. And uh, as a result, I've, I've never seen or done anything with it. I know nothing about it. So I, I will say at this stage, I'm trying to not watch things that star Johnny Depp. So <laughs> there's that little caveat, but all right. Well then ladies and gentlemen, your winner this week would be Luke Neitzel. <laughs>